Right now, American protest music sounds like this. We don't believe you, because we the people. Alone. If I don't say something, if I don't say something, if I don't say something, But it wasn't always this way. While today's protest music serves the same purpose as music like this, the way it reaches audiences has fundamentally reshaped the genre time and time again. Early American protest songs like Yankee Doodle and John Brown's Body were pretty simple. The melodies came from songs people already knew. John Brown's body lies moaning in the grave, but his truth still marches on. The lyrics were repetitive and easy to remember, and that made it easier for the songs to spread through the oral tradition. The rise of electrical sound recording in the 1920s changed the way music was created. It allowed artists to use complex tunes and lyrics. A famous example of that is Billie Holiday's Strange Fruit from 1939. It was a powerful take on lynchings in the South. Black bodies swinging in the southern breeze. People had a really strong response to the song. They either loved it or they hated it. It was almost completely banned on the radio, which meant that most Americans heard about it, if they heard about it at all, through word of mouth. But its omission from the radio didn't take the song out of history. From the poplar trees. After World War II, protest music changed again when folk music became popular through the radio. This land is your land, and this land is my land. From California to the New York Island. Woody Guthrie is probably one of the most famous folk music protest writers. One of his most famous songs is This Land is Your Land, which he wrote as a protest song in response to this super popular song at the time called God Bless America. Guthrie's music became popular with the working class and went on to inspire musicians like Bob Dylan. Well, the times, they are changing. But Dylan himself edged away from the suggestion that he was a protest movement leader. I got nothing to say about these things I write. I mean, I just write them. I got nothing to say anything about them. I don't write them for any reason. There's no great message. I mean, if, if you, know, you want to tell other people that, go ahead and tell them. People turned to Dylan's music for its unifying message, despite his reluctance to be a part of any sort of movement. But there were other artists who were less coy than him. And everybody knows about Mississippi Goddamn. Nina Simone wrote Mississippi Goddamn in response to the 1963 murder of civil rights activist Medgar Evers in Mississippi. And she also sings about the bombing of the 16th Street Baptist Church in Alabama that same year. Alabama's got me so upset. The civil rights movement produced several notable pieces of protest music, but the late 1960s and early 70s also saw a lot of political unrest in the United States. So this is Marvin Gaye's 1971 hit, What's Going On. Brother, 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 there's far too many of you dying. It was a part of a famous wave of protest music that followed the Kent State Massacre when the National Guard opened fire and killed four unarmed students protesting the Vietnam War. As the war came to an end, protest songs in America refocused on issues of class. The shift coincided with the rise of VH1 and MTV in the 1980s, which gave artists a visual medium to express themselves. Hip hop quickly gained notoriety, in part thanks to groups like Public Enemy and NWA. While hip-hop became a burgeoning space for political thought, a feminist punk rock movement also began to take shape. The Riot Girl movement was led by all women bands, and it was early to mid-90s when all these women came together with a focus on making their music try to forward progressive agendas, and specifically feminist ones. Our way of life, our very freedom, came under attack in a series of deliberate and deadly 
terrorist acts. After 9-11, there was this huge pool of emotion and frustration that helped singers make some really good music, but the lack of a unifying political movement left a millennial protest song resurgence sort of dead in the water. But bands like Green Day gave a really good effort, and the title track of their 2004 album American Idiot took aim at the war in Iraq. The election of Barack Obama in 2008 brought a different energy to protest music. With the first black president in the White House, musicians took up the empowerment song. I'm fucked up, homie, you fucked up, but if God got us, then we gon' be alright, alright, nigga, we gon' be alright. Kendrick Lamar's All Right became a rallying cry for Black Lives Matter toward the end of Obama's presidency. We will be alright. And in this era, social media became the biggest tool for sharing music. That change is even more evident in the face of Donald Trump's presidency. A good example of that is the song Quiet by Milk. The songwriter, Connie Lim, used the internet to recruit a choir for the song, which became an anthem at the Women's March. The purpose of protest music is to bring a movement together. So as long as people continue to do that and continue to leverage these new tools that we have with social media and with the internet to make these songs that gather people together, protest music will continue. Hey there, thanks for watching. We know that centuries of material could have gone into this video, so if your favorites didn't make it, we want to invite you to share it in the comments.